Now we're ready for the first ever North Carolina Child Hunger Hero Awards. We are so excited about this uh, today and so happy that you all are here to help us celebrate these unsung heroes. The MC for the awards, Gerald Owens, is our No Kid Hungry partner and friend who has graciously presented with us at several events, including our conference each year. Most of you recognize him as the evening news anchor for WRAL TV. Welcome back, Gerald, and I'd like to thank you once again for leading this celebration. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. What are those little snappy things? It's kind of intimidating. <laughs> It's a good thing. What does that mean? So if you don't like what I say, what, where, what's that little device? <laughs> Remote control, that's mean. <laughs> you know, who said that? Raise your hand. <laughs> Remote control, our greatest enemy. Well, luckily, you don't have a remote control today, so you have to watch this program. My goodness. All right. Excuse me. I can't read this without my glasses. Um, what's so funny? Okay. What's up with these? How come no one else is wearing them but me? You have them. Can y'all put them on for a second? Let me get a quick pho photograph from my Facebook page. All right. This is pretty cute. All right. I'll give you a second. Sorry I'm hijacking the program. See, when you can't turn the channel, you have no choice. <laughs> there we go. Y'all are looking good. I'm about to take them in sequences because that panoramic thing will take me all day to figure out. Um, all right. Yeah. Here we go in three, two, one. Three, two, one. And three, two, one. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> okay. I can't believe I can actually see this with these on, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. Uh, I'm pleased to be here with you today on behalf of WRL and Capital Broadcasting. I want to thank you all for your hard work and dedication to the mission of feeding our children. We're a community partner with you in this important work, and uh, thank you for letting me be part of this celebration. Uh, if you have attended this conference before, you're used to seeing the North Carolina School Breakfast Challenge Awards uh, at this time. Now, because of Hurricane Florence and other natural calamities this year, Breakfast challenge has been delayed. The winners will be determined using a March to March comparison instead of an October to October. Um, and uh, they will be recognized at the annual SNA NC conference this summer. We do have a celebration this year, the Hero Awards, as Luann mentioned. We are excited to be recognizing unsung heroes who work in all kinds of programs to feed more children. Now, before I go any further, we have two special presenters joining us today. The first continues to prove herself a champion of children and their good nutrition. I'm always glad to see her every year when I'm here. Ladies and gentlemen, please a warm welcome for our first lady, Kristen Cooper. Okay, that's just an inch lower. <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. Um, as Gerald said, I think I've been to every one, every one of these since I've, uh, since I've been in, in office. Um, <laughs> In fact, I think No Kid Hungry actually reached out to me before the inauguration. So we've been involved early on. And we mention you guys whenever, you know, we mention childhood hunger just about everywhere we go. We're on a um, 100 county tour and we just hit 82. So, you know, and, and it's a big issue. It's a bigger issue in some places than others. We even when we talk about bird, feeding our birds, sometimes we'll work that in. Look how great that the birds in our backyard have enough to eat. We wish our kids did, too. <laughs> but um, we've, um, our office is proud of having collaborated with No Kid Hungry to, kind, to obtain grants to uh, try some uh, innovative, different kinds of, of, of delivery of breakfast and um, have hosting uh, nutrition specialists at the mansion. Uh, where my husband would often do proclamations about breakfast week. In fact, it's uh, universal breakfast is um, one of the issues that the two of us have are partnering on. Both Office of the First Lady and the Office of the Governor have made that a priority. Um, 
we've also had the chance in the First Lady's office to um, visit as, as our, we do our tours and see how these um, innovative plans work and have been very impressed. I know that a lot of people, we've seen kindergartners do breakfast in the classroom and it's worked out great. So it's, you know, it's not what you think when you think, hey, let's give a bunch of five-year-olds yogurt <laughs> in our classroom and see what happens. But it's great. We've seen teenagers do the, the grab and go at, you know, between periods or even the after school, grab a sandwich to take it home with you to get you through your homework. Uh, a variety of things, and they've all been wonderful. I, you know, I, I think it's the least we can do in a, in a country that has plenty of food that we not have hungry children. So I really look forward to continuing to work with No Kid Hungry and all these other organizations and individuals that are fighting hunger in the state. And thanks to everybody in the room working in and out. I don't know if Gerald can be cut back or am I, okay, I'm not introducing the congressman. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> I got one now. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. All right, our other special guest today is a fixture on Capitol Hill. Uh, he has been the U.S. Representative for North Carolina's 4th Congressional District seemingly forever. He has, that's a good thing. He has a job for life. No one beats this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman David Price. Thank you, Gerald. I've never been called a fixture. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'm, um, I'm happy to be here and happy to once again welcome all of you to, uh, to, to, to this occasion. This just gets bigger and bigger and more inclusive and better, and so uh, it's very encouraging to see all of you here, to look at the program you've been having this morning and the kind of uh, discussions that uh, we're kind of dropping in in the middle of. But I, I appreciate being included, and I'm happy to offer a word of encouragement. Thanks to Gerald Owens for once again offering his celebrity to our, uh, to our occasion, and to the First Lady for making uh, child nutrition a priority of, uh, of her administration and, and calling attention to this uh, so persistently through many, many occasions like this one. Special thanks to No Kid Hungry North Carolina for uh, convening today's conference. And uh, through coordinating with No Kid Hungry, uh, this, this has broadened my outlook a, a great deal and given me a feel for how these, uh, how these dollars are spent and how these uh, programs work on the ground. Certainly the promotion of, uh, of school breakfasts and making sure they're more and more uh, accessible, that that's an essential part of the way we, we view our, uh, our nutrition outreach. And then, uh, the, the year-round concept. I know you've been discussing both of these things this morning, but these summer meal outlets that I've been able to visit in Durham and Raleigh have underscored the importance of, uh, you know, hunger doesn't stop. The need for nutrition and for good meals doesn't, doesn't stop with, uh, with the school day or the school year. And so understanding that and, and making, making certain that this is a, a kind of seamless, um, the, the, these, uh, these nutritious meals, the support for families is, is available in a seamless way. That's, I know, your goal, and it's something that uh, we're, uh, we're, we're determined to keep pushing on. And so thank you for doing that and for focusing attention so effectively on food insecurity in our state. Uh, many school nutrition programs uh, do receive a federal support, a federal subsidy. We're, uh, we're, we're, I'm well aware of how essential that is. And I'm determined as a member of Congress to make certain that that support is there, that uh, adequate, adequate support is there, and, and that we address the, we address the, the needs uh, wherever they are. And I have to say, if that requires uh, rejecting budget cuts, if that requires uh, opposing reduced nutrition standards, then that's what we've all got to do. So we're here today to uh, honor leaders and educators, uh, have some recognitions here in a few minutes. Um, everybody who's been working in our communities on the front lines to ensure healthy and nutritious meals for all of our children. I look forward to celebrating the accomplishments of each uh, No Child Hunger hero, uh, to, to, to be the, the names to be unveiled uh, momentarily. But really, everybody here is a hero. 
far as this uh, work is concerned. We appreciate all that you've done, the various organizations, the various communities, the cooperative, collaborative uh, efforts and partnerships. I mean, that's what's visible in this room today, and that's what's so inspiring. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for being an example of, uh, of uh, the kind of community we want to be, the, the kind of inclusiveness, the, the kind of concern uh, that we uh, want to exemplify. Uh, you know, you're putting that into action, and for that, we're all in your debt. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Congressman Price. First Lady Cooper. Um, this fall, No Kid Hungry put out the call for nominations. Of, oh, by the way, I have one of these now. <laughs> so you're in trouble. Although my thumb keeps getting stuck in this thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm not doing it right. I guess you got to do it like big fat side up or the little side up? Side little side? Big side up. Two schools of thought, right? Little side, big side. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> We put out the no call for nominations of Child Hunger Heroes. The, uh, they were looking for heroes serving in any role and contributing, and contributing in any method of fighting child hunger in our state. 109 of you answered the call, nominating heroes from more than 50 counties across North Carolina. All of these heroes deserve to be celebrated for their hard work and dedication. If you are an NC Child Hunger Hero nominee, please stand right now and be recognized. Is that you all? Oh, there you go. Now, we will display the names of all the nominees after the ceremony. They can also be found on the No Kid Hungry NC website. Make sure to find the heroes from your area and continue to celebrate by sharing good news with mayors, town council members, school boards, and others. And now for the winners. And it wasn't easy to choose winners from this group. To determine the finalists, each nominee was ranked by no Kid, the No Kid Hungry staff based on the description provided by their nominator. Uh, these 14 winners stand out because of their passion, creativity, tenacity, and when it comes to fighting child hunger. As I call your name, please join me on the stage so we can recognize you. As you receive your award, please remember to pose for a photo before you move off stage. All right. Linda Beard. As a social studies teacher at East Bladen High School in Bladen County, Linda Beard has made feeding children a priority by incorporating healthy recipes into lessons, working with her students to introduce the Eagles Feeding Eagles Food Pantry at that school, supporting her school's innovative second chance breakfast program, and going above and beyond to make sure students have food during the holiday break. Linda received nominations from fellow teachers and the school nutrition manager at East Bladen High School. Congratulations, Linda Beard. Okay. Oh. Apparently, they're getting honey from the mansion beehive. I didn't know y'all had a beehive over there. Well, okay. That's what's over there. That's what I smell. That's why those bees are all outside. Um, Jennifer Brown, as a director of school food service for Swain County Public Schools, Jennifer is truly North Carolina's year-round Meals for Kids all-star. Swain County is one of the few school districts in our state acting as its own sponsor for the at-risk after-school meals program. It's one of only 40 districts in the state meeting the national 70% goal for school breakfast participation, which it achieves by making breakfast part of the instructional day. And this summer, Swain County once again met a higher percentage of its need through the summer meals program than any other county in the state. Jennifer was nominated by her superintendent, Mark Sale, who said that none of this would be possible without a dedicated and hardworking staff led by an exceptional person. Congratulations, Jennifer. Deborah Davis Carpenter. Deborah received more nominations than any other candidate for this year's Hunger Hero Awards. As Child Nutrition Executive Director for Hope County Public Schools, she has led the district in drastically increasing school breakfast participation, using innovative service methods like breakfast in the classroom, second chance, and grab and go. Hope County Schools currently has the highest ratio in the state of free and reduced eligible students eating both school lunch and breakfast. This is a metric used nationally to elevate success in the school breakfast program. In addition, she has worked diligently to make sure all students are served healthy, tasty meals at no charge 
for both breakfast and lunch, and all staff have a supportive and modern working environment. Deborah was nominated by her superintendent, Freddie Williamson, and other colleagues from Hope County Public Schools. Congratulations, Deborah. <laughs> Richie Cornett. Since becoming principal at Mulberry Elementary in Wilkes County, Richie has started several initiatives to address child hunger in children in this community. These include providing, or rather proudly supporting participation in the Community Eligibility Provision, or CEP, to provide meals for, for free to all students, a free outdoor food pantry called the Grace Box, which Richie himself stocks every Friday afternoon for the week ahead, adding Mulberry as a summer meal site for the past four years, and partnering with local churches, businesses, and other organizations to collect food, raise money, and arrange events with the Wilkes Fresh Food Truck. On top of this, Mulberry Elementary has contributed record donations to the annual Friends Feeding Friends Food Drive under Richie's leadership. Congratulations, Richie. <laughs> Sil Gonzo, or is it Gonzo? The accent's on the end. Gonzo, all right. Sil. Sil is executive director of Our Bridge for Kids, a nonprofit after school program in Charlotte that is free for families and supports more than 200 refugee, immigrant, and newly arrived K through 8 students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, this support includes providing uh, them with a hot, healthy meal through the At Risk After School Meals Program which provides reimbursable meals for children through community organizations, schools, and other partners. Now, last year, with support from the After School Meals Program, as well as local foundations, the Jewish Community Center, and the Sisters of Mercy, our bridge provided more than 30,000 meals for students and their families. And still believes that everyone deserves great food and to be treated with dignity, no matter their financial circumstances. <laughs> Congratulations, Phil. Thank you for helping me with your name. <laughs> All right. All right, Tracy, and La Tracy Holbert and Laura, Val Laura Valdez. Tracy and Laura have gone beyond their roles as a site manager and leasing agent at Woodbridge Apartments in Asheville. They also volunteer their time to make the Affordable Housing Community Summer Meals Program, for which the YMCA acts as a sponsor. Uh, and this is very fun for the kids. They provide healthy food for children and their families and extend resources to members of other communities. From hosting cookouts and movie nights for kids to driving to Mana Food Bank, on behalf of residents, they are leaving smiles on faces everywhere they go. They were nominated by their colleague, Joyce Chambers, who said that residents always tell me they don't know what they would do without Tracy and Laura. Congratulations, Tracy and Laura. <laughs> Melody Howell. Melody is the school nutrition manager at Bethel School in Watauga County. She brings excitement and enthusiasm to school meals with special events, like annual Thanksgiving meal, celebrations of National School Breakfast Week, and Child Nutritional Week. And she encourages school and staff and families to visit the cafeteria. She has also championed programs like Second Chance and Universal Free Breakfast. All of this has contributed to increased participation in school meals. Melody has worked to create an environment in our cafeteria in which all students feel a part of the school family. Now, where we go? Okay, and knowing that they are loved, and know that their stomachs and their hearts will be fed. She's nominated by her principal, Brian Bettis, who writes, I can't decide who is loved more, Mrs. Howell by her students, or our students by Mrs. Howell. Congratulations, Melody. Congratulations. Steve McCrossin. Since becoming executive director four years ago, Steve has led the Nourish NC team in more than doubling the size of its backpack program to serve 1,200 children from 50 schools, while also increasing the quality and quantity of the meal offerings. Steve has also led Nourish NC in launching a number of new programs, including the Farmers Markid program, M-A-R-K-I-D, uh, which brings farm fresh fruits and vegetables to food deserts and high need areas. The Food Pharmacy, Pro food Pharmacy, F-A-R-M-A-C, get it? Uh, where children are screened for food insecurity in their doctor's office and then provided with food if they're struggling with hunger. And the Toddler Tummies Program, a partnership with other nonprofits to send food into the homes of one to four year olds struggling with adverse childhood events. Located on the coast in New Hanover County, Steve and Nourish NC 
also provide food assistance to those in need during Hurricane Florence and the federal government shutdown in 20, uh, of 2019. Nourish NC has a longstanding partnership with the Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina, which provides food and funding in support of its weekend grocery program known as Weekend Power Pack. Congratulations, Steve. Avery Pickett. Avery began working to help feed fellow students as a third grader when she created a Backpack Buddies program at her elementary school. In the nine years since then, her work has included fundraising, food drives, and support for both food pantries and the Summer Meals program, all to help her fellow students. She's also successfully petitioned Governor Cooper twice for proclamations celebrating Backpack Buddy programs across the state. Avery is nominated by Brian Edkins, her principal at Cape Fear High School in Cumberland County who said that in his 26 years as public educator, he has never had a student who worked as diligently and as passionately to provide food to students who are hungry. Congratulations, David. Good job, Avery. Carol Schmitz Corcoran. Corkin. Now, Carol is a volunteer for the nonprofit Bread Riot in Rowan County. She assists with the organization's Share the Harvest grant program, which distributes produce from local farmers to children and their families who need it by piggybacking off of summer meals program routes and locations. Carol and the Bread Riot team distributed nearly 3,000 pounds of produce last year. In addition to the work she does to help apply, in addition to the work she does to help apply for grants, arrange distribution, and manage other volunteers, Carol also finds time to collect books and fun activities for children and share successes on social media. She was nominated by Meredith Honeycutt, a financial specialist with the school nutrition team at Rowan Salisbury Schools. Congratulations, Carol. <laughs> Rosemary and Alan Stimson. Rosemary and Alan are from Winston-Salem. They are longtime summer food service program sponsors through the church. Ezekiel A.M.E. Zion. Now, as a sponsor, Ezekiel AME uses church members, community volunteers, and veterans every summer to prepare and deliver meals to more than 30 meal sites throughout the Winston-Salem area. Their eagerness to reach children, commitment to deliver meals to sites rather than requiring pickup, and kid-friendly menus of hot and cold foods have led the service of more than 500,000 meals over the last five summers. Yeah. This summer, <laughs> yeah, you go. This summer, the Stimpsons also joined forces with the Winston-Salem Think Orange campaign to connect children with not only summer meals, but also many other organizations addressing food insecurity in Forsyth County. Congratulations, Rosemary and Alan. Congratulations. Marcella Thompson. Marcella opens up her home, her yard, her kitchen to make sure the children in her high-needs community get the food they need. After feeding children in her community for years with her own money, Marcella Thompson's Mustard Seed Project became an official summer meal site in Durham last year. Since last summer, people from Durham and beyond have come together to contribute to her and her work. Her small two-bedroom apartment now has three refrigerators filled with food for children. Often called a one-woman wonder by the summer meal staff at DPI, Marcella's hope is that continued community support will help her move her meal site and work out of her home into a new space. Congratulations, Marcella. So, one more time, a big congratulations to all of our heroes. And to everyone who worked hard to feed our children this year, I commend you, we all commend you on your accomplishments, uh, for your continued commitment to assuring that our children have access to healthy food. What you do every day is so important to everyone in our state who cares about the health of our children. Thank you very much.